have your Bible, I want you to share with me this morning in one of these just immortal stories. As you read through your Bible, there are some things that you just don't ever get away from. You know? And these allegories, these illustrations, these word pictures are so, are so important to us. One of the reasons that the Lord chose in His Word to use these stories, these pictures, these word pictures, is because it, it, it becomes a universal language. Every it, it, it's something that is understood by every age group. It is something that is understood by every culture, you know. And it just, it just really, it really helps us, it really touches us. So if you, if you still have your bulletin, or if you have your Bible, in your bulletin, Jeremiah 18, there are a few verses there we're going to be looking at. And that will be, that will be our text for today. And so everything that I'm talking about today will come out of this passage of Scripture. This is, this is what we are talking about today. And, and I, want you to, I want you to join with us in this, this powerful story as we, as we look at observing the potter. Observing the potter. Now last week, last week we, we, we talked about another one of these stories about, about the sower, you know. And then this one, from, that was from the ministry of Jesus, from, from this one, this is an Old Testament illustration. Way back in the prophet Jeremiah's time. So if you have the physical ability and would like to stand with us, I want to read this passage of Scripture uh, for us uh, one more time. And if you don't have your Bible, we'll, we'll put it on the screen for you. And you can, you can read this with us. We're going to, be, going to be reading the first eight verses. The Lord said to me, Go down to the potter's house, for I will give you my message. So I went there and saw the potter working at his wheel. Whenever a piece of pottery turned out imperfect, he would take the clay and make it into something else. The Lord said to me, don't I have the right to do with Israel what the potter did with the clay? You are in my hands like clay in the potter's hands. Man, I, I, I'm, I'm really intrigued by that. If I say that I'm going to uproot break down or destroy any nation or kingdom, then that nation turns from its evil. I will not do what I said I would. Amen. Do you hear that? We quote frequently from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, a similar passage, but I wanted to show it to you here out of the mouth of two witnesses, we have it today. This is the Word of God. Then that nation turns from its evil. I will not do what I said I would do. Father, touch your Word in our hearts today. Let it be real. Let it be fervent. Let it come alive. Dear Lord, let us leave here a living epistle of the goodness of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 
Amen. You may be seen. This is one of those stories that we have preached about and talked about and studied for years and years. I want to begin at the end of that passage of Scripture. And I want to just tell you something, and if you want to quote me, quote what I say, not what you think I say. So listen very carefully to what I'm going to say. I believe that the greatest revival that the church will have is in its future and not in its past. Amen. I believe the greatest revival that the church is going to see is ahead of us and not behind us. I refuse to take up the old adage, well, the church is just not what it used to be. I believe God still has His hand on America. Amen. I believe God still has His hand on this country. There is not an example in your Bible, there's not one example in your Bible where God refuses to hear someone or any nation who after falling repents and calls for His anointing to be restored and its sin resolved. There is not one example, there is not one example in the Scripture of a nation or a people or a person that repented of their sinfulness, no matter how far they fell, no matter what they did or how deep in sin they went, there's not an example of God refusing to hear the prayer of repentance. So what it takes today is for the church to be the church. Hallelujah. Let the church be the church. In our nation today. And I'll tell you something else. God's not through with the church. Amen. Amen. I heard someone told me just this week, just this week I heard this statement again. I've heard it several times. But I heard it again this week and it just really grated on my nerves. Well, you know, the church is in trouble. One man, well, one statistical group has, has done the the statistical work, and they say that among that among the newer generation, among the millennials, 35% of the church is not going to come back. 35% of the church will not be back. The church is in trouble. The church is in trouble. Now, Every time I hear that phrase, the church is in trouble, a shout comes right down here in my soul. Because I began, I began to think about that. The church is in trouble. Can I remind you of a couple of things? Our, the founder of the church was crucified Amen. on a cross. Can I tell you that throughout history, martyrs were beheaded and boiled in oil and crucified upside down and exiled on islands? And, and, and even today, even today, I have friends in China who preach for us here in this pulpit under severe persecution and threat of imprisonment because they are preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you read the book of Acts, the church has always been in trouble. Ever since Pentecost, the church has been in trouble. i tell you what we need to be careful of when the church is not in trouble. When the church begins to just lay back and relax and say we can do anything we want to do and not worry about any trouble or persecution coming to us, it's the persecution against the body of Christ that caused it to grow throughout the book of Acts. And I believe that the same thing can happen in this day that we're living in. Hallelujah. Persecution 
needs to drive us to our knees. Help us to pray the prayer of faith and believe God. I was looking here at Jeremiah. God uses a lot of images to describe His relationship with His people throughout His Word. We all know what David said. That there's the relationship of the shepherd and his sheep. And then Paul, Pauline concept in, the Paul, in Paul's epistles that the husband and the wife are a picture of Christ and His church. And then there's the old adage of the, of the father and his children. Just, just to name a few, a few of them. And then in John chapter 15, he, our, our dependence on the Lord is, is made clear when He said, I am the vine and ye are the branches. There's another relationship. He says, He that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth fruit, much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. There's another relationship that we have with the Lord. He knows. Can I tell you that God knows what He's dealing with? Listen to me. God, God knows what He's dealing with. Yes, yes, yes. God knows what He's dealing with. I get this all the time about somebody. I can't believe that they, they backslid. We have a... We have a uh, uh, one of these super duper whopper whooper preachers in a me mega church and all of a sudden you find out that he's, he's been caught up in an affair or, or, or a, some kind of a situation and, uh, and, and he has fallen uh, from grace and people say, oh no, that's going to give the church a, a, a bad name. I, I, don't, I, I wish stuff like that. And I wish stuff like that wouldn't happen. Wouldn't happen. But let me tell you something. If anybody fails, if anybody backslides this week, I hope they're here next Sunday. Amen. 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 And I'll tell you that. If anybody backslides next, I hope they jump on a plane and come the east way. I'd love to have them right here so that we can love on them and restore them and pray for them and, and expect God to lift them back up and use them because God knows He's dealing with clay. Let me say that again. Maybe this side will take it back. God knows He's dealing with clay. God understands who He's dealing with. I make mistakes, you make mistakes, but God knows He's dealing with clay. He knows what we are. He, he knows what's going on. And I don't, you know, you know, don't, 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 don't give up on yourself and don't give up on anybody else. When Adam and Eve failed, God provided a way that they could be restored. Why? Because He knew He was dealing with clay. When, old, when, when Noah decided that he was going to build an ark for the salvation of his family, and then after the flood, he makes a big mistake and makes a fool out of himself. God doesn't write him off and throw him away. Why? Because God knows he's dealing with clay. When Abraham was called out of Ur of the Chaldees and, and, and he decided he was going to sojourn for a while down into Egypt and he got afraid because Pharaoh started making eyes at his wife and he said she's not my wife. She went when he lied. He, he told a lie to Pharaoh. God didn't throw Abraham away because he knew he was dealing with clay. Jacob was in the bloodline of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was going to have 12 sons and God wrestled with him throughout the night until, until he begged for a blessing and God could change his name from Jacob supplanter, cheater unto Israel a prince because God knew he was dealing with clay. When Elijah prayed the fire down from heaven and then slew Four hundred, over 400 men killed 400. Can you imagine that? He killed 400 false prophets. And then he went and hid in a cave because one woman threatened him. But God came to him in a still small voice because 
God knew he was dealing with clay. When David failed with Bathsheba, God provided a plan and sent Nathan to him to have him repent because God knew he was dealing with clay. When Peter failed, God, the Lord sent someone after him and said, bring him back, bring him back because God knew he was dealing with clay. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This story, this story talks about a potter that has a mission. He has intentions. He has ingredients. He has instruments that are spoken of here. And we need to, we need to realize, occasionally, we need to remind him even today that he's dealing with with clay. We don't need to remind God of anything. But we need to hear it in our mind. That He knows He's dealing with clay. Dean Martin used to sing that old song. You're nobody because somebody loves you. You remember that? You know how true that is? You know how wonderfully true that is? Oh, praise God. Help us to, re help us to realize that we are loved by God. And God is not about to write you off if you, have, if you make a mistake. If there's a, an infraction in your vessel, if there are air bubbles in your clay, He's not going to throw you on the ash heap, but he's going, to, he's going to crush you and make you again into what He created you to become. Hallelujah. You see, our, the secret to this is, number one, don't get out of His reach. Amen. 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 Long as you're on the wheel and things are spinning, Amen. you know, as long as it looks like it's out of control and he's still got his hand on you, don't move out of his reach. Amen. Stay where he can reach you. Stay where he can use you. Stay where he can touch you. Stay where he can keep his hands on you. Will you pray that prayer right now with me? God, keep your hands on me. God, keep your hands on me. God, don't turn away from me. Keep your hands. Oh, it may be uncomfortable. I might not love to feel the crush. You, you may have to pinch me every once in a while. And you may have to crush me every once in a while. But God, don't move me off of the wheel, Lord. Keep your hands on me and make me what you want me to be. Mature me, Lord. And listen, maturity doesn't come with age. Maturity comes with change. Think with me now. Maturity does not come with age. I've been a Christian 50 years. Yeah, you're just like you were the day you were saved. You ain't grown a bit. You had not developed your talent, your skills. You know, God's not been able to use you. You just, you just got on the bus to Disneyland and you're waiting until you get there. You know, come on now. But it takes, it takes change if we're going to mature. Maturity doesn't come with age. Maturity comes with change. I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within. And I was sinking to rise no more. Then the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. Hallelujah. God keep your hands on me. Romans chapter 5 says, But God shows his love. God shows his God shows his love for us. In that while we were still sinners. Christ died. Thank you. Christ died for us. Psalm 136 verse 26. Give thanks to the God of heaven for His steadfast love endures forever. 1 John 3 and 1. See what kind of love the Father's given to us that we should be called the children of God. We need to be called the children of God. God has a mission. The potter has a mission. And listen, his mission is my maturity. His mission is my maturity. Can I tell you, the longer we stay on the wheel, 
the greater the results Amen. we're going to see. You may say, I'm tired of this. I want off of this wheel, Lord. I, 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 don't, I don't want to be spinning all the time. I don't, I don't want you to be dealing with me all the time. I want to be a, a full-grown, mature Christian, and I want to just step away from this. But, but you might not be ready for that. As a matter of fact, I'm still not ready for that. As a matter of fact, I've been a Christian since 1958. And I'm, and I'm still, God's still having to deal with You know what I learned? I learned in dealing with my grandchildren. I don't remember my children near as much as I remember my grandchildren. <laughs> Brought them home from the hospital and had a prescription from the doctor for a certain formula that they needed. And we had to go to the store and buy that formula. By the gallon we bought that stuff. I mean, it was expensive too. You remember that? The cans of formula that you have to buy? You know, for your children, for the, for the, for the fruit of your loins. <laughs> you know, for, for the children that you love so much, you got to buy that formula. And you warm it up and you put it in a bottle and you feed it to them. And then after a while, after a while, they're able to take on some solid food, you know. And so then the, the first task that you got, you got to get rid of that bottle. <laughs> got to get rid of that bottle. But then it's not over because you got that little pacifier. <laughs> and sometimes the pacifier is harder to get rid of. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Than, than the bottle. And then you feel like you've really done something and you go through the potty training stage. You know, you get, them, you get them from the formula to solid foods to, 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 uh, to, to the bottle to the pacifier and then you got to get them off of the diapers and get them potty trained. You know, but I, I'm, I'm just here to tell you that, uh, that, that, I, that I, have, I still have some problems. I still have some problems and I'm not really, I'm not really uh, completely over with all of my situations and all of my problems and just like my children and just like my grandchildren, I go through stages. There are times, there are, can I, let me just tell you this way, there, there are times that I come in singing that song that we sang last week, search me, yes. Yes. oh Lord. Yes. And know my heart today. Try me, dear Savior. Know my thoughts, I pray. And then right here in this altar, I've said, Lord, see if there be some wicked ways in me. Cleanse me from all my sins. But I get down to that place. Lord, I want you to just look at me. I want, I want to just open my heart to you, Lord. And I want you to look. You know? And I keep expecting the Lord to show up with, with, uh, with a pair of tweezers and a little silver plate, you know, and, and come like He's going to pluck my eyebrows or an eyelash or something. You know? And then I hear the door open and I see the Lord come in with a shovel. <laughs> or back up a backhoe. Come on. You, you know what I'm talking about. You, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And Lord, just see, Lord, just see if there's anything you can find in me. And all of a sudden, God shows up and backs up a backhoe. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have to clear this whole area right here. We're going to have to dig all of this out. And it's stuff, Brother Puritan, it's stuff I haven't worried about. But God knows that I can go so far. And, and, and Brother Michael, he, he knows that I can't go any further until he gets rid of this that's in my life. Now, yesterday... Thank you. Yesterday I could go to heaven with it, but today it's in my way. And it's keeping my attention from God and keeping my it's keeping me from really selling out to God and, and, and doing away with anything that is between me and the Lord. And I've got to get rid of it. Yesterday it wasn't a problem, but for tomorrow, I can't go into tomorrow with it. I've got to do away with that. Oh, help.
help me. Lord, help me. Lord, turn to Romans. I may have. There's one through three. Let me just see if I can find this. I've got a scripture out of Romans. There it is. Romans chapter 12 from the Living Bible. Just look, look at this with me for a moment. Look at this with me for a moment. And so, dear brothers, King James starts off brethren. I beseech you by the mercies of God. Listen, listen to the living Bible. And so, dear brothers, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. Let them be a living sacrifice, holy, the kind He can accept. And when you think of what He has done for you, is this too much to ask? King James, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable unto God. Yes. I've never seen this. I've never seen this until this week. And God almost knocked me out of my chair with it. When I began to read and I saw that salvation, this salvation thing, is continuous yes. action. It's not a one-time event. It has a beginning. Mm -hmm. But he says, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercy of you, that you present. Yes. He didn't say, you should have presented. He said, present. That's present tense. That was present tense yesterday and it's present tense today. Present your bodies a living. He didn't say it was alive yesterday when you presented it. He said it needs to be presented daily living. What that says is I've got a point of origin in 1958 when I began to serve the Lord, but this morning when I got out of bed and, and, I, and I prayed that the Lord would touch me and help me and keep me, I presented my body a living sacrifice to Him today. And if the Lord lets me live to tomorrow, I'm going to get up and I'm going to present myself unto Him again tomorrow. It's continuous action. Continuous action. A living sacrifice. Living, living, living. It's amazing. Listen, it's amazing what God can do with a surrendered life. As a matter of fact, when Jesus taught us to pray, what did He say? Your kingdom come, your will be done. Today, every day, Mm. Oh, God help me. His mission is my maturity. The longer we stay on the wheel, the greater the results we're going to see. The kingdom of God, maturity doesn't come because of age. It comes because of change. Romans 8 and 29. We know Romans 8 and 28. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. But look at, look at uh, verse 29. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son. We have been chosen. We have been selected. We have been called to stay on the wheel until we are molded into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't know about you, but for me, that's going to take a little while longer. Yeah, man. That's going to take us a little while longer. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His dear Son. The word conformed there means to give the same shape the same outline or the same contours to it to bring it into harmony or accord with the Lord Jesus Christ. The message says it this way. He decided from the outset. 
to shape the lives of those who love Him according to the same lines as the life of His Son. Hallelujah! That's what God wants for you and that's what God wants for me is to cause us to be molded into the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, what, what does God want for you? What has God called you for? Well, God's called me to be a preacher. Well, God's called me to be a singer. Well, God's called me to be a musician or a minister of music. Well, God's called me to be a doctor or a lawyer or, 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 or a mechanic. Or, or God's, God's called me uh, to, to work in an office. No! All of that's wonderful and noble. Listen to me. God called you to be molded Jesus. into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's your calling. That's your calling. Now, I'm a pastor by trade. But that's not my calling. That's my platform. That's my platform. That's not my destiny. That's my platform. You see, I'm supposed to be molded into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ and serve as, a, as an emissary of Jesus in the pastorate. If, if you are working in a business, then that is not your destiny. If you own your own business, that is not your destiny. That's only your platform. You're supposed to be molded into the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then you work that out in the platform that He gives you. I know that's a little deep, but I'm telling you, once you begin to realize that and see that, you understand that you're just as called as anybody else that is called. You're just on a different platform. And when you use your life as a light to the Lord Jesus Christ, then you'll see the same kind of favor that is shown to you, that is shown to anybody else that's serving God. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Praise the Lord. There's a process. And we've got to trust the process even when it reveals our weaknesses and our brokenness. Now I want you to notice, I want you to notice something else. Notice something else. The potter not only has a mission, that's to make me into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, but he has a mission and then he has a ministry. He, he's looking at my life for problems. Just like, just like the potter, just like the potter was observing the clay to see if there were any problems there, any inconsistencies there, any air bubbles in, in the product there, so that he would have to crush it and remake it again, then God is looking at my life. His ministry is my perfection. His ministry is my perfection. And I don't know about you, but sometimes it takes a little while working on me to get me to get me to a perfect state, to get me to the state that he really can use me like he wants to use me. In the master's hands, our brokenness becomes an opportunity. We need, we need to see our brokenness as something different. When you make a mistake, when you are broken before, when God has to deal with us, when God has to put his hand on our lives. Listen. It's an opportunity for something better and something even more beautiful. You see what I'm saying? Because when he's working with the clay, when he's working with a vessel, he has something in mind. And when he sees something that is going to cause a problem there, and he begins to have to put pressure on us, his intention is not to destroy us, but to make us even more perfect and better and even more beautiful. Yes, Lord. The realization of our weakness and our sinfulness and our brokenness may discourage us. But like I said at the beginning of the message, it never discourages God because He knows how to work with clay. Amen. He knows what He's doing. With each and every one of us, Psalm 78, he remembered that they were but flesh, a passing breeze that does not return. Can I tell you that anything can happen 
when you're in the hands of Jesus. Did you hear? Anything can happen when you're in the hands of Jesus. He's got tools that He uses. He's got a mallet. Now, I understand when they take the clay out, today it's wrapped in plastic. Back then it wasn't. But while it's still wrapped in the plastic, the potter will take a large wooden hammer and he'll start banging, start beating on that clay. He wants all of the air pockets out of it. And, and then he puts that clay, after he gets it prepared, he puts that clay on the, on the wheel and there are a set of two wheels. You understand there are two wheels. There's one at his feet and there's one that the clay sits on that's up here in front of him. And he, he's, continu he's continually turning the bottom wheel with his feet while he works on the clay on the upper wheel. Can I tell you that there is something going on behind the wheel that you're on? There, there is something that God is doing behind the scenes. You don't see what He's doing. You don't understand what He's doing. You don't even know why He's doing it. But He's got His hands on you while the, while the upper wheel is spinning and He's controlling the circumstances. Woo! He's controlling the circumstances of your life in places that you cannot even see it. You can feel what He's doing. You can feel the circumstances that are around you. But I'm here to tell you that my God is in control of my circumstances. I can't do anything about it, but God can. And He knows He's not going to allow me to be tempted beyond. I am able to bear it, but He'll make a way of escape for me. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's in control of my circumstances. He knows. He knows. He knows what is going on. He knows what is, what is going on. He is aware. And then notice this. The potter has a message. The potter has a message. He has a mission. And that is my perfection. He has a ministry. And that is, that is, that is working. Now, his mission is my maturity. His ministry is my perfection. And then I want, I want you to notice that it's probably even more important. His message is my testimony. He wants others to be able to see the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. through Amen. me. Amen. His, his, his message is my testimony. Can I tell you that, that God... Woo, God relishes broken things. God doesn't throw away anybody Amen. that has brokenness Jesus. in his life. Jesus. He, don't, he, don't, he don't throw anybody away. He doesn't throw away nations that fail. He works with his grace to try to help them to change and then be strong. God uses broken things. How many of us are testimonies of that right now? Does God use, God uses me. Does God use you? Yes, He does. Yes, He does. God uses broken things. Ephesians 2 and 10, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before Him, and that we should walk in them. Everyone's broken somewhere. Play something, Jim. When we give our brokenness to Jesus, He makes all things new. He never throws away broken clay. Take that that is broken. Take that that is wounded. 
Take that that is almost destroyed. Bring the pieces to me. And allow me to make it anew again. And I will not only make you a beautiful vessel. The purpose is not to make you beautiful. The purpose is to make you useful. Because I would fill you with the overflowing power of my spirit. So the secret is not the beautification of your vessel. The secret is to make you whole so that you can contain what I would pour into you as my vessel, saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. Some of us here today, we may be laboring, we may be nursing a hurt. It's amazing how many church people can be hurt, isn't it? You know what I'm talking about. Things that wouldn't bother you on the job, things that wouldn't bother you in your family, which it happens in church. Sometimes it just cuts so deeply and we have a hard time do you know what I have learned I've learned this and I'm not the old man of the mountain but God has taken me through some things brought me through some things one of the things that I've learned is that if I forgive the people who hurt me God will heal the pain Amen. that it caused. Isn't that good? If you heal, if, if you choose to forgive the people that hurt you, then miraculously, God will heal the pain that it caused. You may never forget it. You may never be able to really trust them again. You know, but if you forgive them, yes. forgiveness is not an emotion. Forgiveness is a choice. Amen. Forgiveness is a choice that you make. Amen. And that choice just simply says, Lord, I'm going to forgive this person. And from this day forward, I'm not going to rehearse this. I'm not going to nurse this. I'm not going to think about all the little details of what they did. Whenever I see them, I'm going to smile and they speak. But I'm not going to allow that to control my spirit anymore. And when you choose to forgive, then suddenly, miraculously, I don't know how He does it, but then God begins to heal the pain that that hurt caused in your life. And you can go on. You can go on and not remember it and not rehearse it. Not rehearse it. You don't have to rehearse it. You can't erase it, but you don't have to rehearse it. You don't, you don't have to rehearse it. I'm not talking about a case of spiritual amnesia. I'm not talking about some a button in your life that he can push that will delete those files. But he intends to fill our vessel with the power of the Holy Spirit. He intends to fill our vessel with the power of the Holy Spirit. And when he does that, when he does that, when he does that, he will heal the hurt. He will heal the pain that the hurt caused in your life. Would everyone please stand this morning? There may be someone here. You're really laboring with something. You, you, you've really, may, maybe you've been hurt and you're having a hard time get over, getting over. Or maybe you have failed the Lord and you feel like when God looks at you, that's all He thinks about is, is that infraction or that sin. You know, and, and, and you, can't seem, you can't seem to get by that. Let me tell you something. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He'll 
He'll do that for each and every one of us. And this, there's not. I, I'm sure I'm looking across this congregation. I'm sure there is not one Christian here. You haven't been hurt. You haven't been hurt. Something in your life. Somebody. Something has hurt you. Let me tell you, Jesus. He's a healer this morning. He, he's a healer this morning. Yes, he is. He, he's a healer this morning. We may not really like to be touched by the Lord sometimes. But I done made up my mind. I'm going to stay on the wheel. I'm going to stay on the wheel. And I want his hands. I want his hands on my life. And I'm going to say this publicly. I want God in my business. Amen. Amen. I, I want God poking around in my business. You know, I don't, I don't want to get down to the end of life and have something that is there that I've not dealt with. I don't want to get down to the end of life and the Lord say, you need to make this right with somebody. You need, you need to call so and so. You need, you need, I, want him to, I want him to be in my business now. And if there's anything that's going to harm me later, Lord, I want you to deal with me now. Lord, I don't want to sleep another week. I don't want to have another meal. I don't want to be able to digest another bite of food in my life. If there's something that's going to catch me off guard later on, God, I want to deal with it today. Today. I want to deal with it today. I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be lingering in my life. So if you need anything from the Lord, if you need anything from the Lord, well, why don't you just come down? I promise you I'll not violate your space. I will not violate your space. But if you need any kind of touch from the Lord, I want you to come, I want you to come down. I want you to come down to the We got time for you. We've got time for
Touch their vessel. Touch their heart. Touch their minds, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, for what you're doing in this altar this morning, Lord. Touch them by your might, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hear every prayer. Hear every prayer. Oh, God, unburden every soul, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Touch them, Lord, by your might, by your power, by your might. Now I want you to do something else. I don't want you to invade anybody's faith. I don't want you to just look around. And when you look around, if you see someone that just stands out to you, I want you to point a hand at them and I want you to pray for them. They may be on the other side of the building. That doesn't matter. There's no distance in prayer. I want you to just look around. Look around at your brother and your sister. I want you to look around at your friend, at your neighbor. I want you to look around at somebody that God created in His image. And I want you to just point a hand in their direction. Oh, and let the Holy Spirit lead you in praying a prayer for them. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Touch by your mind. Touch by your power. Touch by your strength. Feed every need. Feed every need. Feed every need. Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Then pick somebody else out. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Spirit moving in this place. I feel God moving in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Yes. God, touch in the name of Jesus. Touch in the name of Jesus. Touch in the name of Jesus. God give it a God give God give strength. God give peace. God give encouragement. God give peace. Lord, God touch a friend. God touch a friend. God touch a friend. God touch a heart. God minister to a need. Jesus. In Jesus. In Jesus. God richly bless you and keep you. May He cause His face to shine upon you and give you peace. 
And may everyone that you encounter receive the witness of the Lord Jesus Christ through you. In His holy name we pray. Amen. God bless you, Brother Christian. Amen.